In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a DIN rail timer switch. Right, the first thing I'd like to bring to attention is there was an older version. You can see, although the pins are the same, 3, 5, and 4, the layout of the switch was different. So for this video, I am referring to the new setup when I call out the numbers when I do the installation. This particular video is going to deal with the MTD8 timer. If you are looking for the installation video of the CBI timer, please check my channel for that video. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's complete and I'm just showing you this so you can see what you're aiming for. There is the MTD timer. I also have installed a CBI timer. So I'm using two different timers. The CBI timer does work on a DIN rail and the MTD8 specifically is designed for a DIN rail. You can use this timer for your pool pump, maybe pool lights and things like that, even a geezer. I'm now going to show you how to do this installation. You'll need to have your DB board open. So I'm just going to open it. Right, so you can see I've tripped this. And even though I've tripped it, this DB board has actually still got live voltage. Look at that. So be, please be careful because even though you trip all your circuit breakers, you drop them down, there is still a live voltage here. And the reason is, is because there is another DB board feeding this DB board. So the correct procedure here would be to go and trip the circuit breaker, which is feeding this DB board. In my case, there is an upstream circuit breaker of 20 amps, which feeds this DB board. Now, in your setup, you'll probably find that your cable looks more like that, maybe a 10 millimeter or a 16 millimeter. And the reason mine is so small like this is, as I said, I only have a 20 amp circuit breaker feeding this little DB board because the loads are very small. Right, so here is the earth leakage and here is a circuit breaker. As you can see, it's a 10 amp and I'm going to install this uh, timer just for some lights. Now, the first thing you want to do, just have a look and see that there are some numbers here and there's some numbers on that side. Now, the top row is for the AC supply. Now, keeping in mind, there is a polarity here. Now, when you buy your timer, you should get this little insert and you can see there it says there terminal one is live in. Terminal two is neutral. So if you have a look there, can you see there is a one and a two? This is the live and this is the neutral. To install it on the DIN rail, you'll see there's a little spring clip here, plastic. And I'll just put that there using a screwdriver at the bottom. I'll just lift that over. All right, so I'm just going to hook that onto the top there, as you can see. And there's a little uh, space here for my screwdriver. And I depress that down and press backwards. The timer is now sitting on the rail. Now, you might notice it's not firmly sitting there, even though I've uh, put this here, it's still got a bit of free play, that is normal. Now, in order for this timer to work, it needs its own live and neutral. Live is on the left, neutral on the right. So, I'm going to start with the neutral. If you can see on the top right here, I have a neutral rail, and all I need to do is run a wire from there to there. I have a wire like this, and now what I'll need to do is to just strip it. Take your wire stripper, pierce just the jacket, and pull. If you do not have wire strippers and you only have side cutters, you can use them. Just make sure you do not embed the blade into the copper. So you can just kind of cut, or, or let, let's say uh, cut through the insulator, and then tear. You're almost like tearing it. Be careful of gouging the copper, otherwise it breaks. Now the neutral is the second terminal over there and I'll just tighten this. Right now I'm going to wire that into the neutral rail here into an available slot. Now to wire the live you can use a jumper like that but the correct method is to use a copper rail like that or a bus bar and you can buy these and get them cut to size. If you do not have a copper bus bar you can use a conductor in the following method right there you can see the live wire coming to this point over here right, then make sure you tighten that now you want to uh, control your lights so that means you need to have a circuit breaker for the timer 
So this is going to be my light circuit breaker, which is going to feed the timer in terms of the uh, current, which is going to go through the timer and the timer is going to switch it on and switch it off. Remember that we don't use this timer without a circuit breaker. You still got to have a circuit breaker to disconnect the timer if the timer goes faulty. So locate the wire that is going to be fed to your lights. Now I've already done that. This is the wire that is going to my floodlights out in the garden. And this needs to go into the timer. Now referring back to the diagram, you can see that it's terminal 5, which goes to the appliance. And the live wire coming in from the circuit breaker is coming from number 4. So we are looking at 5 and 4. If you look at this little diagram here, you can see that 5 and 4 is the correct terminals. Right, so this was my circuit breaker for my lights. So that's how it used to be. Um, and then I used to just switch my lights on and off. But now because I want a timer, now this is going to come on the other side of the timer. But that means I still have to jump from the circuit breaker into the timer. So just having a look at the terminal, pin 5 is going to be there. So this is going to the light. And pin 4 is going to the circuit breaker, the output of the circuit breaker. And then your load goes to pin 5, which is in the middle there. Okay, right, so to recap, I'm going to turn this on now. Now you, you should be able to see there at the top your 220 volts feeding the timer, charging the little battery inside there. You can see live neutral, the neutral going to the common neutral rail, and the live is fed from here. If I had to disconnect the uh, earth leakage, you'll see that the 220 volts, the supply voltage is now offline. Now the next thing is, this is the switch for my load. So whether it's your floodlights or pool pump, in this case I did actually wire a pool pump and you'll hear it when I switch it on, keeping in mind that the timer is activated. Right, so I have a multimeter sitting here and I'm just going to show you how this timer is operating. Right now it's in the off position. Look, the circuit breaker is on, but the timer is actually off. So that must be an open circuit. So when I measure here, look what I'm measuring. The full voltage, 244 volts. Why? Because it's an open circuit. So now what happens if I activate the timer, you can see the timer is activated. Can you see how it's closed or shorted out those terminals? And then the, uh, in this case, the pool pump has come on and the, the garden lights at the same time. So that's just showing you what is happening here. When the timer activates, it's closing those two pins, allowing current to flow through the timer to the motor uh, or your geezer or your floodlights or whatever it is. And then here at the top, you can see there is the supply voltage for the timer to operate 240 odd volts at the top there. If your DB board looks something more like this, well then you have to follow a slightly different approach. Now this is a three phase distribution board. The top phase is not shown, it's out of the picture. But what I'm going to show you is just this bottom rail. And the reason why is because there's a difference in the size of the attachment points. Now if you look here, you'll see two different circuit breakers. This is the DIN rail and this is the SAMI. And you can see that the attachment points are different. So if you've got this type of uh, rail, then you're going to find that the MTD8 is a bit tricky to get inside because it doesn't directly fit on the rail back plates. As you can see, uh, the, it doesn't fit. While you can see it's made for these type of circuit breakers. There is a workaround though. Now you can get these little adapters and you can see how it fits in here into the DIN rail and it allows you to convert the DIN to the uh, Samite. So in this case you can see what I've done here but it's a little bit tricky. Uh, you probably will need two of these and you might even need to glue them. As, uh, then you will be able to get this into this type of DB board. Just having a look at a schematic of the setup, there's your mains, then it went through a circuit breaker, then the output from the circuit breaker goes into the timer, the output of the timer goes into the load, and then the other side of the load is to your neutral. Just remember your timer does require its own supply, so there is the uh, AC in and the neutral, and remember that we connected that on the common rail. 
so when you close your circuit breaker you're allowing current to flow like this and if the timer is activated it will short out those contacts and then your load will activate now i have the timer right here and you can see there's terminal 4 and 5 and that is why i've drawn 4 and 5 like that because it correlates to the actual device so that means 4 is going to that side and 5 is actually going to that side so it's actually flipped round so what the timer is doing inside it is actually shorting out pin 4 and 5 when the timer is activated when you set your program that the timer is on it shorts out pin 4 and 5 allowing current to flow into your load now please note that the wiring that you use this timer is a 20 amp timer please make sure you use sufficient current carrying capacity wire so there you can see it says 20 amps so you're looking at at least a 2.5 millimeter cable and make sure the circuit breaker is matched to this timer for example this timer says it can carry 20 amps there's no point having a circuit breaker that is 30 amps there because if this timer goes faulty the circuit breaker won't activate you need to have at least a minimum timer of 20 amps 16 amps is fine 20 amps means that the timer may still be damaged if there is a fault because the circuit breaker is only set to operate at 20 amps. So this may damage because that is the maximum current carrying capacity of the timer. I'd recommend a 16 amp circuit breaker. Make sure the cables coming in here can handle the current carrying capacity as I've explained. Okay, if you'd like to see what's inside the timer and how to open it, there's two clips on either side there and on that side and then it opens like this just be careful these uh, little posts tend to fall out there we go so there's just the buttons uh, there's your little LCD display here's another one I've had a few failures on these as you can see this one is totally burned out so there you can see uh, this one has actually popped uh, what you will notice about it is it does have a quite a nice battery there so if your power goes out uh, this can last quite a bit of time and you won't lose your settings even though the max current carrying capacity says 20 amps I just this is a 25 amp relay uh, the reason why this one blue is because there was a floating neutral and uh, it was used with a generator and a whole long story but anyway so that's the inside of this if you have to close it just make sure you line up these posts into the slots over there all right so that brings me to the end of the video and thanks for watching cheers